Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Now, turn discuss further into polar coordinates and now look at area of a polar curve. Now, before I get to it, just want to make a slight note. Basically, reuse of my videos. Feel free to make use of, re upload, or even monetize my videos as long as you provide a link to the original video. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about this, whether I should do this or not, and I, and I thought might as well, especially since the ad apocalypse on YouTube, where uh, pretty much uh, yeah, pretty much all videos, uh, the advertising has been cut down, and barely anyone's YouTube videos make any money. So might as well just uh, let you go and share them, uh, re-upload, do what, do what you want. Just please provide a link to the original video. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and I think it's better just to have these videos spread around because it's a lot of uh, detailed mathematics and other topics on this that I think everyone should know about. And also consider uh, su consider supporting me through uh, yeah, PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and also through my affiliate links. So anyways, let's just jump right in. So let's look at areas in polar coordinates. So in this section, we develop the formula for the area of a region whose boundary is given by a polar equation. We need to use the formula for the area of a sector of a circle first. So before we get to that, we'll first recall the formula for a sector of a circle, which I've done in my earlier video. You can see my earlier video. I'll put that in the video description below. Basically, if we have a region like this, or a sector of a circle where the angle is theta, this is the radius r, and now you have the area inside here. So area here is equal to, as I proved before, one half r squared theta, like that where theta is in radians, and we'll circle that. So we're going to use this in the derivation. Yeah, and again, where r is the radius and theta is the radian measure, i.e. angle and radians. My calculus book just wrote radian measure. I haven't seen that before. Just the angle and radians of the central angle. Now also note that the area of a sector of a circle is proportional to its central angle relative to a circle central angle to pi. This is, uh, yeah, this sounds all confusing. It's, uh, I tried to reword my calculus books one that was even more confusing. And what I mean by this is just a, a easier reminder of finding out this area of a sector formula. And basically, uh, the hardest, usually the hardest part about mathematics is trying to type it out in a sentence. Uh, it's, it's usually that's the hardest part, trying to explain it in a sentence as opposed to just drawing it out. So what I mean by this sentence is if we had a sector of a circle like this, where I'll call this theta like that, and now we have if you were to extend this further, I'll just extend it like that, of a full circle, and I'll draw this a bit better, like that. So the area of this region across here, I'll call this area of a uh, sector here, I'll call this a, uh, yeah, a theta, but now area of a full circle has a central angle 2 pi, which is, again, 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees, and I'll call this full circle angle, I'll just call this a uh, 2 pi, or a circle. And now this one equals to just a famous formula, pi r squared, just area of a circle like that. And, uh, and again, you could check my video links uh, in the description below for the proof that this is the area of a circle, a pi r squared, but you probably already heard of pi r squared. So let's just jump right in. So what I mean by this, it's a proportional, so the area of a sector is proportional to its central angle relative to a circle. Central angle is if we took out, uh, if we considered A of the central angle uh, uh, theta equals to its proportional, uh, this is going to be theta over 2 pi, like that. So it's proportional to the full central angle 2 pi of a circle times is by the area of a circle a 2 pi. That equals 2. So that's what I mean by all that. And now you could see that it is, in fact, the same as the formula above. So theta over 2 pi. Now we write pi r squared. Notice the, the pi's cancel. And now what we're left with is 1 half. And now we have r squared and then uh, theta like that. That's what we're left with. And this is the exact formula above. So this is uh, this is a uh, quick way of memorizing memorizing it is proportional. Just take the area of a circle times it by theta over 2 pi.
All right, so now let's just jump right in. And now the next step we're gonna do is similar to my other uh, videos on deriving formulas for area. So what we're gonna do is let R be the region shown below. I'll draw that in a bit. Bounded by the polar curve R equals F of theta and by the rays or angles of theta equals A and theta equals B, where F is a positive continuous function and where b minus a is between zero and two pi. This is actually the central angle of the region we wanna uh, solve for the uh, the area. And again, it has to be, uh, in this case, below a full circle, so we actually have one in between like that. So let's just draw it out. Let's draw this r equals f of theta. First, I'll draw a polar axis here. That's the origin o, and you have a polar axis. And now what we're gonna do is draw a region like this. This is equal to r equals to f of theta. And I'll actually move that over there. So what we'll do now is just move that because I'm going to draw a ray or an angle. So I'll just draw an angle like that. We'll call this angles a. In other words, this is uh, theta equals to a like that. Now when we go to the b one, let's draw it across like that. Now this angle across that is b. And this, yeah, this ray A uh, theta equals to B right there. And then the in between is the central angle of this region that we want to solve for, and that is just B minus A. And now this full region inside is the one we want to solve. That's R over there. So there is our stuff that we want to deal with. All right, so now that we have uh, written it out like that, next step, like always with areas, deriving formulas for them, we divide the interval from A to B into sub-intervals with endpoints theta 0, theta 1, theta 2, et cetera, all the way to theta n, n equal widths delta theta. And also the rays now, where theta equals uh, theta i, anywhere in between, uh, then basically divide the region R into n smaller regions with area a i yeah, of the i region is approximated by the area of a sector of a circle. So we use a sector of a circle in a derivation with central angle delta theta, that's the equal width one there, and radius now is f of theta i star, where that i star is just anywhere in between. So what yeah, so if we were to draw this out, just to show you what I mean is, let's first draw the polar axis like that. And now let's draw this region again, just make it a bit bigger though. So what we'll do is here, if we have this angle all the way across, I'll draw this one actually over across here. This is theta equals to A, and this also equals to our, our first point, theta zero because we're splitting this up uh, theta zero theta one etc and then we draw the second angle let's draw this all the way across there and now the region looks something like this and let's see it's roughly uh like that one let's draw this a bit more similar yeah just for consistency it looks something like that it goes down more uh let's draw this again like that so yeah something like that and now where this angle here, again, that is theta equals to b, but also could be considered our theta n. That's the furthest endpoint across there. And now what we're going to be doing is splitting this up into equal angles. So like that, like this, etc. And then we keep going on and on and equal widths or equal angles across delta, uh, delta theta right here. Yeah, so delta theta, this one's delta theta as well. They're all, they're all exact same. This one could be considered a theta one, theta two, and you keep dot, 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 keep going all the way. We get over here, theta n is over there. This one's theta uh, n minus one, et cetera. And in between here, I'll, I'll draw my angle soon for the generic uh, i one, theta equals theta i. And before I get to that, yeah, before I get to that, let's just uh, point out that each of these regions has an angle. This one's going to be uh, A1, this is A2, etc. Now you have over here, this is A n. It's considered for the far end point A n. We don't consider it A n minus 1. Uh, this one's A n minus 1 over there, like that. So we have the angles like that. And now for the generic one, just a generic i one, I'll draw this in red and I'll extend 
this out like that. Let's draw this better. So it's like that. This one we'll call this theta i. And now drawing uh, the one over here to the right of it, straight through. Yeah, we'll call this one theta i uh, minus one. So just one below that. And also what I'm going to do is draw this point here that connects through it like that. So at this angle here, it extends past, we'll call this theta i star. And that's anywhere in between. So that's this theta, no, that's this theta i star where, I'll just write this in red, where theta i star is, is in basically in, anywhere in between a theta i minus one and theta i. It could even be theta i, depends how you want to solve a midpoint, whatever. For if you're doing some sort of approximation. So now we have this region right here. We'll call this uh, A i, or uh, I'll draw that. Yeah, actually, we'll just draw it over here. So that's our area A i. And now since this is just a polar function, we could uh, now approximate this uh, by yeah the area of a sector of, uh, of a circle with central angle delta theta and radius, this is our radius f of uh, theta i uh, star. So basically this radius across there, this is going to be r uh, i star equals to f of, this is a, just a function of the angle f of i, draw this across there, i star like that. So if we were to draw a polar, uh, yeah, sector of a circle, not a polar one, then we have it look, would look something like, so if you could just assume like a draw a circle around it, I think it would look something like that. And then we have a region across there and then we could approximate it and it again has the same exact angle of delta theta like that. Yeah, so thus the region there, the uh, generic one, AI is roughly equal to, and now we just plug in our area of a sector of a circle, that shaded region, uh, one half, times it by r i star uh, squared times it by now the angle, the central angle is delta theta. Now this equals to one half and just plug that f function in. So f of i uh, theta i star squared delta theta. Yes, yeah, so yeah, and so an approximation to the total area is just a summation of all these. Of, of A yeah, to the total area A of the region R is, yeah, so we could say the total area A is roughly equal to, or instead we could write uh, A, just be more uh, technical, A equals to the summation of the angles A i from i equals to one to n, which this is approximated by using this formula over there, i equals one up to n, of now one half, and then you know, one half plug that in the r function f of theta i star, like that squared delta theta. And so now that we've written this approximation, it appears from the above figure that the approximation improves as n approaches infinity. And as you can see from here, if we were to have an infinite uh, amount of these rays, then the delta theta is gonna be infinitely small so that the approximation uh, that we are using for each of these area segments gets closer and closer to the exact one. In fact, that is actually what happens. So thus taking the limit and writing it as a Raymond sum, we get it, uh, we get the following. So we're writing it as a Raymond sum, in fact, you can't write it exactly by the uh, current definition. I'll get to that in a bit. So we take that sum, or what we'll do is take a limit of this summation limit as n approaches infinity of this uh, i equals one of n one half f of of yeah f of theta i star like this square delta. Theta. Now this equals two. If we write it as Raymond sum and recall Raymond sums, I'll put a link in the description below. We write this as a definite integral from area from a to b of now one half, and then this becomes f of theta squared, and then the delta theta becomes infinitely small. Write it as d theta by that notation.
Yeah, now the only issue, again, as I stated earlier, with the, with this is that the Raymond sum above is for the function g of theta equals one-half f of theta squared. That's this whole thing over there. Yeah, as opposed to the non-squared version, it has that square there, which, uh, yeah, version of f of theta, which I covered in my earlier videos. But it is nonetheless plausible and can, in fact, be proved uh, proved, which, I'm, which I may do in a later video, that the formula for the area of the polar region is in fact this integral over there. So area of that region is in fact from A to B of one half F of theta squared D theta, even though uh, this Raymond sum is using a different type of function that, than I covered before because of that squared. It is nonetheless, yeah, pretty easy just to look at this. It's, uh, they're all very similar. As you increase it to infinite number of them, you get infinitely small, the, uh, the segments, and the approximation gets closer and closer to it. But nonetheless, I I'll, I'll, I'll still may do a later video for a more technical proof of this uh, Raymond sum point. Yeah, so this is the angle integral of from A to B of, and now this is pretty much the same formula as the uh, area of a sector, it's very similar. And then we could also write this or as the more often written as or uh, area equals to a integral from A to B of one half, and now we just write R squared d theta where, let's write this circle this, where R is just function of theta, that's just our polar curve. Yeah, so notice uh, this is pi r squared instead of the theta, we have d theta, that's very similar to our area of a sector. Yeah, so again, so basically note the similarity between the formula of a sector of a circle and that of a polar curve. So a one half r squared d theta versus one half r squared theta. This is the area of a polar curve, or rather this is because the area of a polar curve is derived from the area of a sector of a circle. When we apply the above formula, it is uh, helpful to think of, a, of the area as being swept out by a rotating ray through zero that starts from angle A to angle B. So just, it's just rotating across and then you have that region across. Something like that, just you could think of it like that and ends with angle B. Anyways, that is all for today. Hopefully you followed along this very extensive uh, proof video. Hopefully you follow along this I uh, had this figure right here slowly and once you understand it, it's pretty much the same as all the other area derivations or uh, integral kind of derivations with Raymond sums. And it was all for today. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as uh, viewing these notes on Steemit, which I will be posting right after this video. Hashtag get on Steam. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math.